Let me begin by saying a comment about what happened last a week ago with bin Laden. Um, what we did was to send in a team to go after the man who has killed uh, Americans, who has killed Pakistanis, who has ordered the death of people around the world. We did this because it was the right thing to do, and we did it because this is something we have been trying to do for many years. Had he surrendered, we would have accepted his surrender, but he resisted, and so he was killed. The key that's come up in Pakistan is the question about whether this reflects on a relationship with Pakistan. And I want to emphasize, this, this was not meant to be something that was a statement about Pakistan or about our relation with Pakistan. This was a very secure, very difficult operation, and the operational security was very tight. Very few people knew about this. So the people who are uh, analyzing this question and wondering whether the Pakistanis knew, very few people knew. And so it was not a statement about our relation with Pakistan. It was a uh, necessary move to make sure the operation was a success. But there are questions that have been raised. They've been raised by your journalists. They've been raised by our journalists. And those questions are, what was he doing here? Was he, doing, was he here because people knew he was here? Was he here without their knowledge? These are questions that your government must answer. What we hope your government will do is take an honest look at the, the, what happened and realize that whatever the answer to that question is, the way ahead is to work together with your friends, with us, to try to make sure that we can defeat terrorism around the world, here in Pakistan and globally. We value the sacrifices that the people of Pakistan have made. We value the sacrifices your soldiers have made up in the Northwest. But we also realize that people have suffered in the streets of Karachi uh, at the Navy uh, buses that were bombed. When we see uh, that well, the soldiers who have died up in the North, we also see that people have been killed, innocent people targeted by bin Laden, when Sufi shrines are blown up. These are very important things, and we make sure that uh, we want to make sure that it's understood we don't want that. We want to fight this challenge to your values, to your freedom, and to the tolerance that Pakistan is, is famous for. We want to be in the fight with you against these people. There's a long way to go in getting this done. We need honest discussions at the top. Your intelligence chief, General Pasha, needs to talk with our intelligence chief, Mr. Panetta. Your president and our president, your president was the first person our president called after the raid. They have to talk. We have to work out how we can do this, because in recent years, the mistrust has grown between our people. That's not a good thing. We have to develop the kind of trust that I think is natural to us, natural to us culturally, natural to us by our history. When we think of our assistance to you, we want to make it understood why we engage in this assistance, why the farmers in Sindh who have extra wheat this year have that because of seeds donated by America. We think it's the right thing to do. When we think of the lady health workers who are out talking with the, uh, and trying to help uh, the women of uh, some of the rural areas in your country, paid for and trained by America, we're doing this because we want to see women empowered. We want to see a healthy Pakistan. We do everything we can to support peace with your other neighbor, with India. We're friends with India. We're friends with Pakistan. We're friends with Afghanistan. And we hope that in the future, that the, the prospects for all of your talent, all of you with your neighbor that's uh, doing so well economically and can be so much of a part of your future, that those, those uh, relations can be uh, improved. So that's uh, something that we're working on with your government in addition to trying to work through our own issues, trying to be honest, trying to be open about them, and to work for a future where we can really see a strong Pakistan that's a great friend of America and an America that understands Pakistan well enough as well. Osama bin Laden's situation has given us a lot of questions. What are the questions? What do they think? Today, for the answer to these things, the American Cameron Munter has come to the Sindh University of Sindh University. I am Osama bin Javed and we will listen to the questions of the American Cameron Munter. If I look informal, it's because I want to be informal. This is not a lecture, this is a conversation. I'm here to talk with you, to hear from you, to learn from you. And I think that the Vice Chancellor and I in our conversation agreed the best thing about working in universities as a teacher 
is that you get to learn from the students. So I already want to thank you in advance for what you'll be able to teach me and Marilyn today when we talk. So I look forward to your questions, but first what I'd like to do is ask my wife Marilyn to make a couple of comments. Assalamu alaikum. Hello, everyone. <laughs> Um, it's really nice to be here. Thank you, and nice to meet all of you here today. Thank you for coming. Uh, but we'd love to take questions. Sir, I am uh, talking about you talked about a strong Pakistan, sir. Sir, do you think a country where two American choppers, any other country's choppers, enter and do operation without informing the, even the president, do you think uh, such a country can be a strong country? And the other thing I would like to ask, sir, uh, sir you are a good educationist, your wife as well. I'm talking about since the Americans spent such a, such a huge amount of money on the war against terrorism in Iraq, uh, Afghanistan, and now even in Pakistan they are doing drone atta attacks, which also does not make a strong country. No drone attacks, but if, uh, if we are having a drone attack with, our, with an invaded country and we don't even know about it, uh, you can't call it a stronger country. So I was about talking about uh, if the uh, United States of America would have invested such kind of money uh, on war, on education, uh, tourism, and other things, or even for economical help. We don't need uh, your donations or something like that. We need help. We need, uh, or like our president said, we need trade. We need uh, the handicraft you are wearing. You must know what worth you will get for it in America. And over here, just for uh, almost about less than five dollars, I guess you would have got, got it for. It. So you see, there's a lot of potential in Pakistan. You should help it, not make it weak. Uh, I understand fully. And I've heard this not only from you, but from many other people. So this is a widespread concern. Let me distinguish between two things, if I could. There is a question that has to do with the sovereignty and the honor of your country. There is another question which has to do with the tasks that we face together. These are both important questions. My interpretation, I think what you've said, is that we, the Americans, need to pay closer attention to understand better the issue of sovereignty and honor of Pakistan. And you have a point, and I take that point. Because the issue of what, uh, what kind of relationship we have is based on that. But let's look at the other side as well. When we take out bin Laden, we're taking out someone who attacks you. We're not doing it in order to, uh, to uh, attack sovereignty. We're not doing it to weaken Pakistan. We're doing it to strengthen Pakistan. When we spend our money here, and we spend about 50% on military assistance and about 50% on civilian assistance, we spend a lot of money on those areas where we want to help you, the ones that you talk about. And I agree, we could do a better job of talking about it. That's Marilyn's job in AID. She has to be able to say that. But it's important to see that our goal, even if we are, as you would say, sometimes uh, tone deaf, we're deaf to sometimes to these uh, issues about sovereignty, make no mistake, what we're doing is we're trying to build a strong Pakistan, a strong economy, to build a strong future for people like you, to make sure those people who attack you are the people who are no longer able to do so. So there are two elements to this, and in those two elements, we're doing our best to make you strong, and ultimately to that last point, that you don't want assistance, you want our help. Same with us. We don't want to be spending billions of dollars of aid on Pakistan. We have legislation that is going before our Congress to make textile goods from your country through the ROZs, you know about these ROZs, so that we can have textiles come to our market. We promised that years ago, and we owe you that. We should do that. We're trying. President Obama has said he's trying. And we're trying to make it easier for you to sell your goods. We would much rather see you a strong economy than accepting assistance. In the meantime, if we can help, we will. But our goal is the same as yours.